All right, what's up everyone? Today I'm at Climb Time Indy. This is my home gym in Indiana. And this is my second to last time that I'm going to be in this gym before I leave for Utah. And it's also my last time that I'm going to be setting a route here at Climb Time Indy, as I've actually been route setting at this gym for the past three, three and a half years now. So I thought it'd be cool to come in here and show you all what my setting process looks like. <laughs> and also if you couldn't notice, my head's go like shaved. I wanted to buzz cut it, but I cut it down to like lengths five on the, the trimmer I was using. And <laughs> I then, wanted to bring it down lower I brought it to like I think three or something maybe I brought it to one even I don't remember or I don't know I brought it to a, like a lower level and I was like it's not gonna go that low and then I saw what it was and I like had already cut a decent piece off and I was like oh no I'm committed now so I just like cut all off to that size and it was like it looks awful it was like way too short but now I know what my head looks like bald now I mean it wasn't bald when I cut it but it was like pretty pretty low. So I know I don't have a very good bald head now, which is more reason I want to like work out <laughs> and get my like physique up and get like a bigger neck. So it like doesn't look so bad with my bald head. Cause I'm probably gonna be bald in like the next 10 years anyways. And then I also want to lose these glasses. I actually want to go get LASIK this year. So I think I'm going to do that. And then, then I'll have a muscular body with the next year or two, a warrior body, <laughs> the body of a Viking. And then I will have no glasses on my face. So I don't look like a Jeffrey. I don't look like a loser, a geek. I'm not saying glasses look are bad, or, but I don't personally like them. I like what my actual face looks like. So I'm not gonna, I don't wanna wear glasses anymore. But yeah, I'm gonna show you my setting process today. So this is the wall I'm gonna be setting on. It's called the red. Actually all the uh, walls at climb time here, they all have names. So this one's the red named after the red in Kentucky where everyone goes and sport climbs. So actually I'll just flip back to the wall real quick. So these walls are really short. It's 24 feet. So I literally just set everything off a ladder, which you can see is over there because it's they're just not that tall. If it, they were taller, I'd ascend up the ropes we have, but it's just not worth it. It's faster than a ladder in my personal opinion. It's just more convenient. As you can also see at this gym, we tape and we set very dense. It's a very old school gym. If you haven't seen my videos where I'm climbing in this gym, well, we like fill every bolt hole. We set it very old school here where we set very outdoorsy movement and we tape everything and it's hard to read the routes and there's like a bunch of routes, which to be fair, we also don't have a lot of space in this gym. So that's partly why we fill up our walls to the fullest because we don't have that much space in this gym. So we put more routes up because we have a lack of walls, but I'm going to show you my setting process today. I'll be honest, this is not the most professional gym. We don't do it how most commercial gyms do it. I, I'm, I sit by myself, like I'm literally in here by myself right now setting. Most, most gyms, they set and they set in teams they set together and then some will come through and edit which we still do edits here but not like we do at other gyms i'm actually currently the head setter at this gym so i actually am the one in charge of the edits that get made on the routes but yeah so i'll just show you my setting process so i actually already picked out some holds i'm not going to go back in there and show you all that but i have some holds out here as you can see there's a really old school holds i've got laid out they're super old and that's because i saw it would make the most sense to pick out really old holds for my last set at this gym i thought it'd be really cool i'm um, just using reuse some really old dirty grimy holds so i'm gonna set a 510 we don't actually do a b c d here at this gym so we just kind of set something that's in the 510 range you know it could be an a it could be a b it could be a c it could be a d whatever as long as it's somewhere in the 510 range that's kind of that's how we set it here so i'm gonna set a 510 and obviously because the wall are only like 24 feet they're not really even like that's really high ball bouldering outside it's not even really a sport route <laughs> So we really just kind of set tall boulders, but we still grade them with like 510, 511. So the grading is always really whack anyways. So I'm going to set this route. I'm going to use orange tape and I'm going to go up this right side of the wall here because if you look, it's pretty empty. And we also have orange, an orange route on the left side already. So I'm going to bring my, my orange route up this side. So for my actual setting process, when I set a route, sometimes I have a particular move in mind that I want to set somewhere. Usually I just let my routes just create themselves and what I mean by that is you know maybe I'll put a hole in the wall somewhere and then I kind of just branch out from that hole I often like to use larger holds so if you look up here see that big pink mouse but it's actually got orange and blue tape so I actually set that route and it's got that big hole in there. I often like to set with big holds. So I usually have a, a place where I want to put that on the wall and like I sink of a sequence through that hole and then I set that 
and then I set my sequence involving that hold and then I usually just kind of build from there. I either, I finish out from there and then throw a bottom on, I'll throw a top on. Depend, it depends on where I put the hold. Usually I put it in the middle of the route because one, it fills up space better. It looks better on the wall, if the big holds in the middle. If instead versus like the very end or the very beginning, it looks a little better. It, again, it depends on where the other big holds on the wall are at. There's currently not that many big holds in this particular set but but yeah i usually i usually if i have a particular hold that i have like a sequence through it i usually put that up first set that sequence and then i let the route build itself from there but sometimes i just kind of throw a start on a cool sequence i just think of a cool sequence and then i just let it the rest of the route flow um i don't really have any particular you know set rules or order that i follow every time actually quite often it's different um the way I set my routes, you know, sometimes I'll set a top first and then the bottom and then the middle, or sometimes I just start at the bottom, go all the way to the top. Sometimes I, like I said, I start in the middle, put a big hole in the middle. Sometimes I set particular four sequence and then I sit around that. It, usually I start have a starting point, but beyond the starting point, it can go any way. It can go any direction. And surprisingly, I don't know how, but <laughs> I always like set a route and like it almost always comes out exactly how I wanted it to climb. I don't know why. I, I'm i not saying like I'm naturally good at this because I know I absolutely suck compared to majority of the setters in the world, especially setting at this like gym. We only set like just old school outdoors movement. We're not saying like cool comp movement. If I was trying to set like comp routes, it would, those would come out so terribly wrong my first attempt. I know they would. If I was like trying to set a forest movement, but like here when like I have like a sequence I'm trying to set, it always comes out like so nice. Like usually the first try. Not always, but I'm a very imaginative and creative person. So usually I'm just going to be honest, this comes pretty easy to me. I know I can see a lot of other people, it's definitely like difficult for them to think of movement and they get stuck often thinking of movement, cool movement. And then like, they'll like put something up and then they absolutely hate the route. And you know, it might not even climb that well. For me, I just never had that problem with setting. I, th I think it's just cause I'm a very imaginative, very creative person. So I've just never had that struggle. I always have ideas, I always have new ideas and it's always like something different. All right, so I'm actually show you the holds again real quick. So as you can see, I've got like a assortment of holds i've got like these pockets they're really cool i've got these like dishes and then i've got more here which these holds never get used everyone hates them <laughs> um i've got these like sloper holds the three in that particular series and then there's these things right here i've always wanted to set with these some other one here i've always wanted to set with them because they're kind of like like it's like kind of realistic if you look close to like an outdoor hold. There's one more we have, but I think it's on the wall. I wasn't able to find it. So they're like cool. We can see like they got like those ridges and stuff. They're more realistic. I love the realistic stuff. So just super old holds. These don't get used anymore <laughs> in like commercial gyms. So it's really cool to be able to set with this stuff. Yeah, I guess I should explain a little bit more. <laughs> before I start setting, but I often, when I set, for me, like I would like to keep the series together. So like this whole series, there's like one, two, three, definitely I would keep those three together. I'd probably want to keep this and this one together because they're similar. And then the pockets, I'd try to set those together and the dishes, I'd like try to set them all together. So I, I guess I, sh I didn't explain this before, but I really like to set in series when I set. Oh, also, I should have said this, but if you haven't noticed, we don't actually set monochromatic at this gym. We try to set monochromatic, but we don't aren't forced to because as you can see, we've got like really weird colors. And then we have holds on the wall that are literally like multicolor, like this here. As you can see, it's black and red, so it's like really confusing. It's like, do you put on a black taped route or a red tape route? Or I guess you could do black and red, but then we only, ha we only have so many holds that are black and red They're, that are like multicolored. So that's partly why we don't set monochromatic at this particular gym. And then it, that's also explains why we tape here still because we don't set monochromatic. So, but yeah, I'm not setting this one monochromatic. Oh, I also didn't show you this. I got these rails. I forgot about that. I've got these rails over here. They're screw on. They're not very good but on this angle, they'll be fine. They're like, I don't know what that is, like a pad, I think. It's like a pad. Yeah, it's about a pad. No, it's less than a pad. It's like half a pad. <laughs> Never mind, just kidding. 
So they're not great either. Those probably won't go in the overhung part because they will no longer be 510 if I do that. So if I use those, it'll be at the bottom. I kind of want to make this like super duper outdoorsy for my last route, just like, you got like crimps, pockets, the slopers, just kind of like everywhere. But it's like a cool sequence no matter how you climb it. So I'm kind of thinking of doing something like that. You got like lots of options, lots of choices, but it still has a clear, like definitive path. And it's not just random holds everywhere. So um, that's my idea for this one. I usually have an idea of some, some kind of theme I want to follow. Sometimes I might be like super pinchy route or super crimpy route, or it's like pockets and slopers, you know? I usually try to stick to a theme and then I'll find a series that has pockets and slopers. That's like a, you know, a series of holds, you know, as you can tell, like the pockets, that's all the same series of holds. Um, it's, or I could give you like another example, like this rail here, this brown rail, that brown rail, there's the same series. Like it's the same, and what I mean by that is it's like the same brand that made those holds. And then holds usually, when they make them, climbing holds, you know, let's say a brand makes them. Like there's one called uh, Rock Candy. We use a lot of Rock Candy. They'll usually, when they have a new set, they call them like, like a set of holds. They'll have maybe like 10 to 30 holds that they made in that set and they all look very similar. So, and that's what I mean by series. Like that is a series. That set is like the same series. So that's what we, that's like climber terminology. terminology. I guess it's really route setter terminology. For those of you who don't really understand what I mean by series, I like to, in particular, set in series. I, I believe that's an also a very commercial thing to do. Most commercial gyms will set their routes in series of holds. You know, if they have a bunch of hold, holds that are like horns or something, they'll just put all the horns together in the same route, as long as they're the same color. Because most gyms set monochromatic as well. We break all the rules of the commercial gyms. We don't do anything commercial here. Well, we do more so now, but we, we definitely didn't used to do like anything commercial. So I'm curious to see how the gym changes over time while I'm gone. If it does change at all, I imagine it will. All right, I need to stop talking. I'm just going to show you route setting now. <laughs> all right, so I've decided I'm actually going to start with the bottom. So I'll just set to that red line. Um, and the red line at this gym signifies where... Um, you can boulder anywhere in this gym, even on the roped walls. The red line is there to signify that you're not supposed to climb past that point because it's tall. So I usually just set on a shorter ladder up to the red line because that's about as high as it gets me. And then I switch to one of the tall ladders to set the rest. Again, there's, it's, that's why I don't even like set on ropes in this gym because like you like set half the route on just that ladder, a small ladder. The other half, it's like what, you go up and ascend for just that? I don't know. It probably is, maybe is fast on the ropes, but for me, I just, I uh, prefer to do it on ladder in this particular gym. So I'm gonna start with the boulder half. I call it the boulder half, just the bottom half up to the red line. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna set that now. All right, one more thing. So this gym, most commercial gyms, they just use drills to set twists, which I have a drill. We have a little baby drill. We have a couple other baby drills. This is the most powerful drill, actually. And it's a little baby drill. And then we have these hand wrenches, which at our gym in particular, we normally stick to the hand wrenches because our walls are old and the T-nets are pretty old. and. It's pretty rough on our walls if we use a big, you know, heavy drill. So just because we don't want to like damage the T-nuts further and we don't want to strip our holds, strip our, our bolts in the wall, and we don't want to damage the walls and whatnot, <laughs> we just take these little baby drills and then our hand wrenches. It's slower, it's a slower process, which, you know, sometimes we do. But like, we'll use like a drill for like stripping because it's faster and you're not gonna like damage, you're not gonna like strip the hold that, you know, doing that. Because you're not forcing it in, you're taking the bolt out of the wall. Which, if you have no clue what I'm talking about, I'm not gonna really go and explain that. It is, it's not really something you need to know, but 
I just figured I'd show you for those of you that do set, we use baby drills here and then we use little hand wrenches because we're not that professional. <laughs> so I've got like, also we use double taping here for our starting to signify the start. So it's like two strand, strands of tape like this one. You start it with two hands and that's like two pieces of tape to signify that's where you start. Now this I'm doing four instead of just two, so it's going two different bolts. So instead of like, you know, like matching, they call it matching and climbing, where you have both of your hands on the same hold. I'm actually going to be having like a left hand here and a right hand here is how you start it. So instead, otherwise if it was just two pieces of tape, let's say I kept these two, you would match this, whatever hold I, hear, I put here, you would match it, but I'm actually going to have you two hands. So it would be like this or it would be like that. It's not super important for you to know, but just in case anyone's curious, now you know. Alright, I'm going to continue setting. So sadly my GoPro turned off, it overheated and I didn't realize because I was really just running it, running it, running it. And I've been using it for like past two hours anyways. I was filming something else before this, but um, sadly it turned off. So I missed this like whole sequence, but it's fine because after I filmed the boulder half, I forgot to tilt the camera upwards anyway. So I forgot to change position. So it's kind of fine that turned off because you probably weren't even able to see what I was setting at that point, but I'm gonna continue finishing putting the hands holds up, which I actually didn't explain this earlier, but I usually put the hand holds up first and then I come back through and add feet afterwards. But I've got a couple more hand holds to add and then after that, I'm uh, just gonna put feet up. I'm almost done with the hand holds now. Alright, so I'm gonna, I've now finished placing the hands, so I'm gonna continue on and throw all the feet up. So again, like before, I'll start with the bottom half, the border half, and then just work my way up. And, I mean, when I set the feet, I usually try to just set it to where it flows. Here and there, I might have like a particular foot sequence I really, really want. Like maybe you have to, set, I set the feet up where you have to do a drop knee, or I set the feet up where you have to do a heel hook, you know? something in particular, but I generally just try to set it to where it's like flows and it's approachable to climbers with different uh, length of reach. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that now and I will film that. All right, so these are my feet, these grayish brown holds. They're like, they're kind of outdoorsy also. So I thought it fit with the seam because most of my holds are outdoorsy. So they're kind of like these, they're kind of like sloped, like this one, it's like, but they have like surface area, you know what I mean? Like there's surface area, but they're actually like sloped, what you're standing on. And they got like these little edges, I don't know, they're really cool. These two aren't in that series, so these two, but they're cool looking too, and they're a similar color. This one's like a jug foot, but that's what I'm gonna use, and then I might use that big hold over there. I tried to use it as a hand earlier, but it's got like chips in it. So it's not gonna work. I like to set with slopey feet, ones that have like surface 
ones that have lots of surface area, but, but they're actually really s slippery when you stand on them. So you just have to stay really tight in your core to be able to stay on top of them, to stand on top of them. So I'm gonna use those feet. And then I use that big guy as a foot. And then, then I think my route will be done. Then I'll have a 510, hopefully a 510. I think it will be, but we'll see. Boulder half should be good now. Okay, so I'm now going to show you me climbing it and I'm gonna see how the route climbs and see if I like it, see if it's good. And then from there, I'll make any edits that need to be made. If not, I will have a route on the wall and hopefully the community will like it. <laughs> so yeah, I'll go ahead and cut to me forwarding it now. Just try that top section one more time so I know if any of that needs to change. Alright, that sequence is a bit too bad. So I like climbed it completely different there and I, I thought of that when I was setting it. And that sequence is cool too. Might be easier, I don't know, which is harder or easier. It's actually very cool. 
no matter how you set yourself up. I'm gonna try one more time, but this holds on have chalk, so it's like, we'll just be honest, they're not, like, they would be way better with chalk on them, but they're not like they'd be. too bad like that. Okay, I've made a few very slight foot adjustments. So now I will try it from the bottom again to see if I have a 510 that climbs well. Okay, but I did the route. I, it's not how I wanted to climb it. If I was more fresh, I would honestly hit the pinch, hit the next pinch, and then bump. That's how I'd want to do it. But I'm like so tired and just like poo-poo right now. Climbing like poo-poo, so it's just, it's not going right now. But I think this is, I believe I have a good 510 now. I honestly have to confirm with the community with what grade it should be, but I think this is good now. So that was my setting video. I don't really know what to say about this, honestly. I kind of showed you my process. Like I said, I don't really have a legitimate, like, specific process I really use. I just, I don't know. I pretty much just, just let my stuff flow. I mean, I, everything I said earlier is basically my process. I showed you my process. So beyond that, there's nothing really crazy that happens. I've sat at, different, at a different gym before and the process there is a little bit different for sure. It's, I mean, it's similar but it's, it's different. Like we sit in a group there and we edit together and we forerun together. Like we don't do any of that here. We don't forerun together. We don't edit each other's routes. I think that would be really good. Instead we just have like the community give feedback here essentially, which we still don't edit our routes. I, I don't like that in particular because if there's a route that's really bad and it's now out there, we're not supposed to go back and edit because I would have my setters make much better routes. I would have my team make way better routes if I had the, the say to, to put that into place to have them actually make really good routes. You know, a lot of times there's feet. All right, well, my camera just turned off because it got too hot. So I'm going to just do an outro real quick. But yeah, that was my setting video. Hopefully it taught you something or showed you something cool. Or I hope it was just interesting to watch. Um, if not, whatever. I'm not going to probably do any setting out in Utah. I'd really like to continue setting, but it's going to be hard for me to continue because I don't actually have my level one certification. So to continue setting is going to be really difficult. Um, I'm privileged here in Indiana because settings and climbing is not that big here, so pretty much anyone can set any of the gyms here without any certification or prior experience. So I've been privileged to be able to start here and get my foot in the door, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to continue that journey. And I'm not really taking, trying to take my setting further. So, but if I do get to set out there, because I'm going to try to set the gym, the local gym, if I do get to set out there, I will obviously try to continue making videos like this. But if not, well, oh well. <laughs> But yeah, hopefully this was cool. This is my second to last time here at Climb Time Indy, probably. My last time will be in a couple days and that's gonna be really sad for me. I've been here for about like six years. So I'm uh, pretty sad to leave this place behind. It's honestly a second home to me. I, you know, I've spent so much time here. I've made a lot of memories here. I've met a lot of people. Pretty much all my friends currently are climbers and they all go here majority of them so you know so it's just it's kind of sad i'm definitely gonna miss this place but i know it's good because i'm moving on to bigger and better things for myself so i'm excited for that and you know at some point you gotta you gotta move on and see new things meet new people try new things so be in a different place i don't want to sit in indiana my whole life i'm 25 years old now and that's partly why i'm getting out of here so i don't want to 
stay back in Indiana my whole life. I want to go out west. I've always wanted to go out west and spend some time out there, especially climb. So now I'm going to be able to do that. So hopefully it all goes well out there and hopefully I'll have a lot of good footage for you all to see. And maybe hopefully one day I'll be back at this place. Maybe not like setting or anything like that, but like I'll be able to get like a video, you know, visiting. I, I may move back to Indiana at some point. I don't know yet. I really don't know what's going on gonna happen a year from now. I really don't know. It's like the first of my life I have like absolutely no clue where I'm gonna be in a year. So like obviously you no one really knows where they're gonna be in a year, but like you have an idea, right? Everyone generally has an idea of what's their the next year is gonna look like for them. Where they're gonna be in a year. Well I have absolutely no clue what it's gonna look like. So but I think it's a good thing, you know? I think it's a good thing, but I love to ramble. I, I might even make two parts out of this. <laughs> I just never stop talking. I love to talk. I wish I could just make videos and talk and talk and talk and just people would watch, but I know people don't want to see that unless the stuff I'm talking about is just like really good. Like I'm super entertaining. Um, you know, like the words I'm saying are really like beneficial, you know, like maybe if I became like a better public speaker, I could just sit here and talk. It's not even that I necessarily like to hear myself talk. I just, people don't really listen to me when I talk. <laughs> not all of them, but most people. Um, but the, the, you know, the, I love it here cause I can just talk and talk and talk to the camera and no one interrupts me, no one cuts me off, no one tries to talk over me. And, and then there's other times where it's like you're talking and you can pick up that the other people are just not even paying attention anymore, they just completely zone out. They're not listening to you anymore, so they just they stop listening. And funny enough, I wouldn't be surprised if my viewers watching this will, or have already done the same thing, they're like, they're skipping through this part, you know, going out, it's like the same thing. But it's still like nice knowing that I can just talk to the camera like this and there are some people that are listening all the way through the end. I don't know, I just love talking. Most people don't really want to hear all the thoughts I have to say. I like, I don't normally talk. I'm actually a very quiet person. Um, it's not that I'm like shy. I'm just, one, I'm an introvert, and two, I, I just know people don't want to hear me talk. They don't, they don't listen to me. I, I generally shut my mouth, keep my mouth quiet, and because once I start talking, well, they, they get, they get bored quickly. So, because I, I just start talking like this, I start rambling, so I, I don't talk. I just, I just keep my mouth closed and there's a few people here and there that, that really do listen. You can tell they, they generally listen. For some reason, those people value what I have to say. I don't know why. They really think what I have to say is of importance and they just sit here and listen to me talk. So for some reason, more majority of people, I just annoy the absolute crap out of them when I talk. So I just, I don't say anything. But there are some people who just listen and you know, I guess this is for those people that do listen, but I love, I just love being able to just talk to the camera like this forever and ever. It's just very relaxing and I wish I could just make videos like this all day long where I just talk and talk and talk, but I know that's very boring to the majority of people and no one wants to see that or listen to that, especially when I'm talking about absolute nonsense. But my camera's probably gonna turn off again because I know it's hot, so I, I need to do an outro. There was a couple of other things I wanted to say, but I'm gonna go ahead and end this vlog. I guess I never really said this was a vlog, but this is a vlog. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, as always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.